like sa akin. Ito. <laughs> Yung aking bagong, ano, subscriber. Good morning, Philippines. Hello, world. Nakaset na po yung aming altar. At nakaready na rin sa 12 o'clock mas. 12 o'clock kami ngayon kasi tinanghali na ng gising dahil late na naturo. Natulog kagabi. So, uh, tara. Simba na tayo. I mean, ready na tayo ng simba. <laughs> tara, simba tayo. Alright, simba na. Simba na tayo. See you later. Have a good day. Happy Sunday. And a blessed week ahead. Welcome to Love Lines. Good morning once again. Happy, happy Sunday once again. Once again. Yeah, na, good morning, brothers and sisters. We are celebrating the Mass. Right. The 29th Sunday. We start na siya. Yes. 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 To you I call, for you will surely heed me, O God. Turn your ear to me, hear my words, guard me as the apple of your eye, in the shadow of your wings, protect me. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And we are your spirit. As we begin this Mass, we call to mind our sins, especially those sins that we often take for granted because it happens deep within us and we don't usually show it outwardly. We ask God for pardon, especially for the wisdom to be able to detect them and to be able to stop them. You were sent to heal the contract of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. We pray. Almighty ever-living God, grant that we may always conform our will to yours and serve your majesty in sincerity of heart. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord to his anointed, Cyrus, whose right hand I grasp, subduing nations before him, and making kings run in his service, opening doors before him, and leaving the gates unbarred. For the sake
speak of Jacob, my servant, of Israel, my chosen one. I have called you by your name, giving you a title, though you knew me not. I am the Lord, and there is no other. There is no God besides me. It is I who arm you, though you know me not so that towards the rising and the setting of the sun, people may know that there is none besides me. I am the Lord, there is no other. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Give the Lord glory and honor. Give the Lord glory and honor. Sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord all you lands. Tell his glory among the nations, among all peoples his wondrous deeds. Give the Lord glory and honor. For great is the Lord and highly to be praised. Awesome is he beyond all gods. For all the gods of the nations are things of naught. But the Lord made the heavens. Give the Lord glory and honor. Give to the Lord, you families of nations. Give to the Lord glory and praise. Give to the Lord the glory due his name. Bring gifts and enter his courts. Give the Lord glory and honor. Worship the Lord in holy attire. Tremble before him, all the earth. Say among the nations, The Lord is king. He governs the peoples with equity. Give the Lord glory and honor. The beginning of the first letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians. Paul, Silvanus, and Timothy. To the Church of the Thessalonians, in God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ, grace to you and peace. We give thanks to God always for all of you, remembering you in our prayers, unceasingly calling to mind your work of faith and labor of love and endurance in hope of our Lord Jesus Christ before our God and Father, knowing brothers and sisters loved by God, how you were chosen. For our gospel did not come to you in word alone, but also in power and in the Holy Spirit and with much conviction. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. The Pharisees went off and plotted how they might entrap Jesus in speech. They sent their disciples to him with the Herodians, saying, Teacher, we know that you are a truthful man, and that you teach the way of God in accordance with the truth, and you are not concerned with anyone's opinion, for you do not regard a person's status. Tell us then, 
What is your opinion? Is it lawful to pay the census tax to Caesar or not? Knowing their malice, Jesus said, Why are you testing me, you hypocrites? Show me the coin that pays the census tax. Then they handed him the Roman coin. He said to them, Whose image is this and whose inscription? They replied, Caesar's. At that he said to them, Then repay to Caesar what belongs to Caesar, and to God what belongs to God. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. I have something personal to share with you, and it's a little embarrassing, but I'll share it anyway. Um, you know, I've always been, ever since COVID started, the pandemic started, I, 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 I have always been angry with the way the American president dealt with it. Simply put, I was angry because of his utter disregard for human life, the way he would not encourage people to wear masks because he thought it would be more politically expedient for him, the way he would, um, uh, what's this, gather together super spreaders, the way he would attack people and even and even his own um, his own uh, COVID uh, pandemic team and and contradict. The, the, the guidelines based on scientific studies that they say just to just to make him look good yes. and I'm angry because I feel the same. my god I have relatives there you have relatives there I mean deeply I deeply care for I have friends in the front lines I have nurse friends I have relatives who are nurses and so I am very angry uh, with, with the way it has been done in the United States. And, and this is my confession, the one I, I'd like to share with you. So that when he, when, when the president contracted COVID-19, really the first thing I was thinking of was essentially what you are thinking of right now, which I will not say, but that was what I was thinking of. And I actually felt ashamed of this. And, and I did not tell anybody about my sentiments regarding uh, what I felt when the, when the American president um, contracted the virus. And I, I, I did not. Because for the first time in my life, I was quite conscious that despite the fact that it was easy for me to be so Filipino in saying those two words that we often say when karma happens, no, putinga. <laughs> I, I never said that in public. I did not. My and I had, mind. <laughs> I, there was a great temptation in me to indulge in it and to even gloat. Anyway, nobody would know. But I didn't. I, I was able to check myself and even wished him well. And I think I even said a little prayer for him and his family. You see, I realized, na pari ako. <laughs> and what you see outside has to correspond with the reality which is inside. And I wanted integrity when, as I said, my outside corresponds with what the reality inside. And I also realized that even though it is hidden to you, what I feel about this, which now is not hidden because I just I just admitted it in front of all of you. Even though it is hidden to most of you, it is not to God. And it's about time I address that basic truth that nothing is hidden to God, not even my heart. What happened to me the last week or so is essentially this, that I came face to face with my own malice. And malice, according to the Oxford Dictionary, is nothing else but the desire to harm somebody else. According to the new Oxford American Dictionary, it is intending or desiring to do evil. In short, it is ill will. So for the last two weeks, 
I actually came face to face with my own malice. That even though I was a priest, there was a darkness in me that I also needed to constantly guard against. Now the question is, do we guard against our hidden malice? Because all of us have that because of sin, because of original sin. We all have that propensity for hidden malice. I know, I've seen it. I've seen it in people whom I care for, people whom I love. I've seen it in my fellow priests also, and, and I'm sure they've seen it in me. Do we guard against our hidden malice, or do we simply accept it as inevitable, as something that cannot be changed, and whose repercussions we just basically ignore, because it's part of human nature? The Gospel speaks to us about malice. In fact, the word is mentioned in the Gospel of Matthew today. It says here that the Pharisees wanted to trap Jesus. And Matthew mentions that knowing their malice, Jesus answered. So Jesus was quite aware of the malice that was behind the motivation of the people who were asking them questions regarding the census tax. So Jesus, knowing their malice, asked them, why are you testing me, you hypocrites? So the Pharisees went off and plotted how they might set up Jesus, that they might entrap him in speech. To entrap is malice. Jesus could see what's inside. He could see the malice in people's hearts. Jesus calls them, in fact, hypocrites. Hypocrites, hypocrite comes from the Greek word uh, hypocrites, which means actor. And the reason is very obvious because we act outside as if we are good, when inside we are not. There is a word for this I mentioned in, that, in my last homily. The Lord Himself used it. It is he refers to people who are hypocrites as whitewashed tombs, beautiful outside, but festering and foul inside. Malice is deeply rooted in our human condition. We see it almost everywhere. We see it in families, you know, when people answer back. We see this in our own families, when people answer back when they don't show up, when they should, when they form cliques, nagahanap ng kakampi sa mga kapatid, when we try to manipulate or control other members of our, of our family, these actions reveal that if we are not careful, our own hidden malice can disrupt our family lives. I think emotional blackmail can be a, a sign of brewing malice. <laughs> when we act or deliberately try to hurt a family member, that is an indication of hidden malice. So we see it in our families. And we see it in society also. The wider society. And it's probably called politics. When we try to... It's, it's the power play between, between individuals and parties. And the only way that we put ourselves above everybody else is to put them down first. And that reveals a malice. In fact, I think it is the problem why we're having a pandemic. I think this is the biggest problem we have right now. Nagahawa ang mga tao, ang hospitals that are getting overwhelmed. Um, people are dying. People are going very, very hungry. And yet, like what I pointed out last Sunday, Iba ang priorities ng ating mga stewards sa gobyerno. That is a product of malice. When you would rather put your own personal gain on top of the common people's good. And that is the terrible consequence when people are malicious. We see it in the world. You know, when I was a missionary in China, and we were beginning to hear news about the island, island grabbing in the South China Sea. I began reading uh, stories about it and news about it. 
and then started reading forum, fora of people online who were talking about it. And because I was in China, I could see uh, things in a different perspective. And so, sumama ko sa online forum na yan, I, I said something. I revealed to them some of the things that were happening also in China that I was, I was finding out. For example, many of my friends who are Chinese told me that sometimes there, there's, there's so much, there are so many problems in Chinese society that sometimes for the government to distract its population from the problems within, they look for an enemy or a crisis without, outside. Eh, tayo yun. So because of that, nagagalvanize ang Chinese population to support the government. That is what the Chinese themselves told me. And so I shared that in my online forum to my fellow Filipinos who were complaining about what was happening in the South China Sea. Aba, kinagalitan ako ng mga Pilipino and they started calling me a Chinese hack. And kung ano nung pinagsabi nila doon. I, I think that's the reason why I never went into social media afterwards. No? I, I just realized I even wrote back and said, you know, I'm a Filipino like you, Tinagalog ko sila. And I said, you be careful with the language that you use because it betrays your upbringing. And I left that forum. But my point is this, it happens not just in families, in our society, it happens in the greater world. The viciousness that we see online is a sign that malice is very much, very much alive in the hearts of people worldwide. I mean, you may have received this, for example, in your in your social media, about the warning about uh, from a dad about his son who was playing Minecraft and was having a conversation with somebody who was playing Minecraft, only to realize that the conversation was becoming more personal. The person who was playing Minecraft with his son was asking questions. When are your parents at home? When are they not there? Can I come over and play while, while they are not there? Maganon, until the father started started uh, butt in and spoke. I mean, this is going uh, the rounds of, of social media right now. There is malice worldwide also. And the internet, far from uniting us, sometimes disrupts our tendency to make friends simply because of the hidden malice that we are very wary of and careful about. So malice is essentially dealing with others viciously under the cover of good intentions. It is dealing with others like they don't see your heart so I can act like I'm good to you although I have vested interests simply because you don't see my heart, you don't see my intentions, you don't know what I am planning. That is malice. Unfortunately, we treat God the same way. We act as if God doesn't see our hearts. We act as if God doesn't see and sense the malice in our hearts and in our intentions. In fact, that is at the, at the core of the gospel today. The Pharisees, under the intention of wanting to engage Jesus, question him, but deep in their hearts, they really wanted to entrap him. And Jesus saw their malice. They were acting as if God could not see their hearts, but He can. Jesus warns us strongly about this against this hypocrisy. He sees and reads our hearts, and He reminds us that there will be an accounting one day. In fact, in other parts of the Gospel, He says, there is nothing hidden that will not be known. So one day I will know your, the malice in your hearts as you will know mine. And that should give us pause. In conclusion, malice is basically dealing with others viciously under the cover of good intentions. It is very much in our human existence. It infests everyone, including good people. Hence, the need for us to be constantly vigilant with what motivates us and with our intentions. God alone sees our hearts. And therefore, it is incumbent on us that we continue to check our motivations and live in such a way that our insights begin to reflect the good that we show outside. In short, it's about time 
that we live our lives as if God sees our hearts because he does. Amen. Let us stand to profess our faith. I believe in Even one God. God. Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible, I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. Yes. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church, I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Brothers and sisters, let us turn in prayer to God our Father, through our Lord Jesus Christ, who promised us all we need, and much more if we seek first the kingdom of heaven. With confidence we pray, loving Father, hear our prayer. Loving Father, hear our prayer. For our Holy Father Francis and all church leaders, may they seek new ways of proclaiming the gospel and continue to speak out fearlessly for justice and peace, freedom and responsibility, we pray. Loving Father, hear our prayer. For our civil leaders and politicians, may they recognize their dependence on God as the source of all authority, and dedicate themselves wholeheartedly to the well-being of our people, especially the poor, the weak, and the marginalized. We pray. Loving Father, hear our prayer. For all the faithful, may they take up their duty to assist the missionary work of the Church, especially the Pontifical Mission Societies, by their prayers, sacrifices, and financial aid, we pray. Loving Father, hear our prayer. For all Christian families, may they become effective agents of evangelization by being active in parish life, by being involved with others' needs, and by being true witnesses to the gospel, we pray. Loving Father, hear our prayer. For all the peoples of the world, May we realize that we are pilgrims in this world. May we cherish and use the gifts of your creation to establish your reign of love, justice, and peace. We pray. Loving Father, hear our prayer. Let us pray for the urgent concerns of our community and our personal intentions. We pray. Loving Father, hear our prayer. I'd also like to pray for Helen Valderrama who celebrates her birthday today and for others who celebrate their birthdays today and for families whose lives are disrupted because of the pandemic we find ourselves in, that we might adjust to the new realities but at the same time find deeper and greater life in the experiences that we have and not to take for granted but be ready and joy we pray to the Lord 
Father, Father, loving Father, Father, hear our prayer. And so we ask Mary, whose heart is pure, to pray with us. Hail Mary, full of grace. Is the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, the Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our Father death. Amen. Heavenly Father, we come to you with our, our prayers, with our petitions, with our anxieties, with our hopes, and with our joys. And we are confident that you will hear us through Christ our Lord. Amen. We bring into your table with humble hearts, O oh Lord, the bread and wine, the fruit of the land and of the vine. You will hear us through Christ our Lord. Amen. We bring into your table with humble hearts, O Lord, the bread and wine, the fruits of with open hearts, eternal life bestowed. Gathered now your people, bringing gifts to thee. Let us give you worship for your sacred feast. Continuously we sing you. Our praise on bended knee. We give you thanks, revere you for your generosity. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name. For our good and the good of all his holy church. Grant us, Lord, we pray, a sincere respect for your gifts, that through the purifying action of your grace we may be cleansed by the very mysteries we serve. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you so love the world, that in your mercy you sent us the Redeemer, to live like us in all things but sin, so that you might love in us what you loved in your Son, by whose obedience you have been restored to those gifts of yours, that by sinning we have lost in disobedience. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks, as in exaltation we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, 
the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church is spread throughout the world. And bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Onesto, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection. And all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. For through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may always be free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, has said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us now offer to one another a sign of Christ's peace. Peace. Peace be with you. Peace, peace, peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold our Lord Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God, our Lord who reads our hearts. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof. 
did enter under my roof, but only say the word, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. The body and blood of Christ. Amen. Amen. For our brothers and sisters who at this moment cannot receive the Lord sacramentally, let us pray the act of spiritual communion. Mm -hmm. By Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most blessed sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
Behold, the eyes of the Lord are on those who fear him, who hope in his merciful love to rescue their souls from death, to keep them alive in famine. We pray. Grant, O Lord, we pray, that benefiting from participation in heavenly things, we may be helped by what you give in this present age, and prepared for the gifts that are eternal, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you and your loved ones, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Mass is ended. Go in peace with malice toward none. Malice Thanks be Thanks to God. God. Thanks. Yeah. Thanks be to God. Most blessed Father. The mass has ended. Go with so much for watching once again this is love lines have a good day and god bless